Good day everyone. We are the presenter one or the group one. And our topic for this discussion is the types of warehouses. But first, let me introduce to you my group mates. First, I'm Miggy Bartolome. Second, second is Sarami Pasqua, Pauline Abara, and Maril Guillermo. There are four types of warehouses. First is the direct store delivery. Second is the public warehouses. Third is the private warehousing. And fourth is the cross stocking. But first, when we say warehouse, it means that it is an integral part of the supply chain and it plays a vital role in providing a desired level customer service at a lowest possible total cost. Also, warehousing is the primary link between producers and the customers. These warehouses store all products typically for an extended period of time like sorting products, shipping them out to the customers, and replenishment stock are daily functions of the warehousing. And also the role of warehouses, in, especially in supply chain, is that they are referred to as cost centers and rarely adding value. These warehouses can be used to support manufacturing, to mix products from multiple production facilities for shipment to a single customer, like to break bulk or subdivide a large shipment of products into many smaller shipments, not only to, to satisfy the needs of many customers, but also to combine or consolidate smaller shipments of products into a higher volume shipment and to perform various value added services such as product assembly, labeling, and product returning or product returns processing. Moving on to the first type of warehouse. First is the direct store delivery. In general, firms have several warehousing alternatives. Some companies may market products directly to customers called the direct store delivery and thereby eliminate warehousing in the field. Internet and mail order catalog companies are also examples of industries that primarily utilize warehousing only at the point of origin, such as at sales, sales headquarters or manufacturing plant. For an example, the organizations such as Amazon.com and eBay.com may or may not warehouse the products they, they sell. They may be the intermediary between another party and their customer, providing only the location where transactions can occur. In an omnichannel environment, however, even companies such as Amazon are investing in brick and um, mortar facilities in order to provide the high levels of service to their Amazon Prime customers and others. The majority of firms will store products at some intermediate point between plant or plants and customers in facilities owned or leased by them. In the direct or in the first Types of warehouses that direct store delivery is when a firm decides to store products in the field, it typically faces multiple options, rent space short term called public warehousing, this is space long term called contract warehousing, or own space called private warehousing. In direct store delivery, firms must examine important customer service and financial considerations to those to consideration, considerations to choose between public, contract, and or private warehousing. The second type of warehouse is the public warehouses. Public warehouses are facilities that are rented by a firm for a limited time. It is usually for 30 days period or 30 day periods. There are many types of public warehouses although they can generally be classified into six major types. First is the general merchandise warehouses for manufactured goods. Second is refrigerated or cold storage warehouses. Third is banded warehouses. Fourth is household goods and furniture warehouses. 
Fifth is a special commodity warehouses. And lastly, the number six is the bulk storage warehouses, where each type provides users with a broad range of specialized services. The general merchandise warehouse is probably the common form. It is designed to be used by manufacturers, distributors, and customers for storing practically any kind of product. They call storage warehouses, refrigerated or frozen, provide a temperature controlled storage environment. Some general merchandise or special commodity warehouses are known as banded warehouses. These warehouses undertake surety bonds from the government and place their premises under the custody of a government agent. These are the goods such as imported tobacco and alcoholic beverages are stored in this type of warehouse, although the government retains control of the goods until they are distributed to the marketplace. At the time, the importer must pay duty At that time, the importer must pay customs duties. The advantage of the banded warehouse is that import duties and excise taxes need not to be paid until the merchandise is sold. Next is the household goods warehouses, are used for storage of personal property rather than merchandise. The property is typically stored for a period of time as temporary layover option. Special commodity warehouses are used for raw materials and agricultural products such as grains, wool, and cotton. Ordinarily, each of these warehouses and handles one kind of products, product and offers special service, services particular to that product. The bulk storage warehouses provide tank storage of liquids and open or sheltered storage of dry products such as coal, sand, and chemicals. These are the benefits that may be realized if a firm uses public warehousing rather than other forms of storage, such as private warehousing include the conservation of capital, the ability to increase warehouse space to cover peak requirements, or to meet peak requirements, to reduce risk, economies of scale, flexibility, tax advantages, and a specific knowledge of cost, public warehouses require no capital investment on the part of the user. Conservation of capital. Public warehouses require no capital investment on the part of the user. The user avoids the investment in buildings, land, and materials handling equipment as well as the cost associated with starting up the operation and hiring and training personnel. However, the variable costs associated with public warehousing are typically higher than for the other form of warehousing. The meet peak requirements. If an organization's operations are subject to seasonality, the public warehouses or the public warehouse option allows the user to rent as much as storage space as needed to meet peak requirements. A private warehouse, on the other hand, has a constraint on the maximum amount of a product that can be stored and is likely to be underutilized during a portion of each year. Because many organizations experience variations in inventory levels due to business cycles or seasonality in demands of production, or seasonality in demand or production, sales promotions, or other factors, public warehousing offers the advantage of allowing storage costs to vary directly with volume. With public warehousing, the user can switch to another facility in a short period of time, usually within 30 days. Thus, the public warehousing options poses less risk to the organization. Economies of scale Public warehouses are able to achieve economies of scale that may not be possible for a small firm. Public warehouses handle the storage requirements of a number of clients at the same time, and that volume allows the employments of a full-time warehousing staff. In addition, building costs are nonlinear, and a firm pays a premium to build a small facility. 
Additional economies of skill can be provided by using more expensive but more efficient materials, handling equipment or automation, and by providing administrative and other expertise. Public warehouses are often able to offer offer a number of specialized services more economically than other types of warehousing. These specialized services include the following. First, broken case handling, which is breaking down manufacturer case quantities to enable orders for less than full case quantities to be filled. Second, packaging of manufactured product for shipping. Third, consolidation of damaged product and product being recalled by the manufacturer manufacturer for shipment to the manufacturer in car load or truck load quantities. Fourth, equipment maintenance and service. Fifth, stock spotting of product for manufacture with limited or highly seasonal product lines. Stock spotting involves shipping a consolidated car load of inventory to a public warehouse just prior to a period of maximum seasonal sales. Six, a break bulk service whereby the manufacturer combi- combines the order of different customers located located in a market and ship them at the car load or truck load rate to the public warehouse where the individual orders are separated and local de- delivery is provided. And last, economies of scale result from the consolidation of small shipment with other companies using the same public warehouse. The public warehouse consolidates orders of spe- specific customers from the product of a number of different manufacturers on a single shipment. This result in lowing in lower ship shipping costs as well as reduced congestion at the, at the customers receiving dock. Also, customers who pick up the orders at the public warehouse are able to obtain the products of several manufacturers with one stop if the manufacturer all use the same facility. Flexibility. Another, another major advantage offered by public warehouses is flexibility. Owning or holding a long-term lease on a warehouse can become a burden if business conditions require changes in location. Public warehouses require only a short-term contract and thus short-term commitments. Short-term contract, contracts available from public warehouses make it easy for firms to change field warehouse location due to changes in the marketplace. The, re- the relate cost of various transport modes, volume of products sold, or the company's financial position. In addition, a firm that uses public warehouses does not have to hire or lay off employees as the business volume changes. A public warehouse provides the personnel required for extra services when they are necessary without having to hire them on a full-time basis. Public warehousing makes makes it possible for the manufacturer to experiment with a warehouse location to determine its contribution to the firm supply chain and to discontinue the operation with relative ease of cost savings or performance objectives are not realized. Taxes In most states, a, f- a firm is at a definite advantage if it does not own property in the state because such ownership means that that the firm is doing business in the state and this and is thus subject to various state taxes these taxes can be substantial consequently if the company does not currently own property in a state it may be advantageous to use a public warehouse in addition certain states do not charge pro- property taxes on inventories in public warehouses. This tax shelter applies to both regular warehouse in inventories and storage in transit inventories. A pre-port provision enacted in some states allows inventory to be held for up to one year tax-free. Storage and handling charges. When a, ma- when a manufacturer uses a public warehouse, it knows its exact storage and handling costs because it receives a bill each month. 
The manufacturer can also forecast costs for different levels of activity because the costs are known in advance. Firms that operate their own facilities often find it very dif difficult to determine the fixed and variable costs based on variability in volumes. Activity-based costing may be used when operating private warehousing so that a specific costs are known. On the negative side, some public warehouse facil facilities find it difficult to effectively interface with some clients. The lack of standardization in contractual agreements makes communication regarding contractual obligation difficult. Many of these potential problems have been overcome with the ad advent of a e-commerce, e email, electronic data, intercharts, LOT, and internet. Availability of specialized service Specialized service may not always be available in a specific location. Many public warehouse facilities only provide local service and are of limited use to a firm that distributes regionally or nationally. Consequently, a manufacturer, manufacturer that wants to use public warehouses for national distribution may find it necessary to deal with several different operators and monitor several contractual agreements. Also, some public warehouses may not offer certain services unless a sufficient number of Clients require it. Some, sometimes, a public warehouse and a client will cooperate to develop, develop and financially support a new service. Space availability. Fi finally, public warehousing spa space may not be available when and where a firm wants it. Certain of space to do occur periodically in selected markets, and this can adverse adversely affect the supply chain and marketing strategies of the firm unless an organization has developed a good relationship with a public warehouse in an area where a shortage exists space may not be available or else the price of that space may be very high Private warehousing, one of the most important warehousing decisions, is whether public or private facilities should be used. In order to make the proper decision that includes cost and service perspectives, the supply chain executive must understand the advantages and disadvantages, as well as the financial implications of each alternative. The appendix to this chapter illustrates the type of financial analysis that must be performed. Many companies typically find it advantageous to use multiply forms of warehousing, such as private warehousing and or contract warehousing. Private warehouses can be used to handle basic inventory levels required for least cost distribution in markets where the volume justifies ownerships. Public warehouses, a form of outsource search sync, can be used in those areas where volume is not sufficient to justify ownership and or to store peak requirements. Public warehouses typically charge on the basic basis of case or hundred weight stored for handled. Consequently, when the volume of activity is sufficiently large, public warehousing charges exceed the cost of a private facility, making ownership more attractive. In private warehousing, the company that owns the goods typically exercises a greater degree of control over their storage, handling, and management. The firm has direct control of and responsibility for the product until the customer takes possession or delivery. This greater degree of control, control allows the firm to integrate the warehousing function more easily into the company's supply chain. Flexibility as an advantage with this warehouse control comes a greater degree of flexibility, not flexibility to reduce or increase storage space quickly. 
but flexibility to design and operate the warehouse to fit the specific needs of customers and the characteristics of the firm's products. Organizations with highly specialized products requiring special handling and or storage may not find another may not find other forms of warehousing feasible. Cost Private warehousing can be less costly over the long term. Operating costs can be 15 to 25 percent lower if the company achieves sufficient throughout or utilization. Example, high inventory turnover. The generally accepted industry norm for the utilization rate of a private warehouses is 75 to 80%. If an organization cannot achieve at least 75% utilization, it, will, it would generally be more appropriate to use some other type of warehousing. Human Resources By employing private warehousing, an organization can make greater use of its present human resources. It can utilize the expertise of its technical specialists in addition, in individuals working in the warehouse are company employees. Generally, there is a greater, greater care in handling and storage when the firm's own workforce operates the warehouse. On the other hand, some public warehouses allow their customers to use their own employees in the handling and storage of their products. Tax Benefit an organization can also realize tax benefits when it owns its warehouses. The precision allowance on buildings and equipment can substantially reduce the cost of structure or apparatus over its life. There may also be certain tangible benefits associated with warehouse ownership. When a firm distributes its products through a private warehouse, it can give the customer a sense of per permanence and continually of business operations. The customer sees the company as stable, dependable, and lasting supplier of products. This can provide an organization with potential marketing advantages. Flexible as a disadvantage, a major drawback of private warehousing is the sum as one of its main advantages. Flexibility, a private warehouse may be too costly because of its fixed size and cost. Irrespective of the level of demand the firm experiences, the size of private warehouse is restricted in the short term. A private facility cannot expand and contract to meet short-term increases or decreases in demand that might occur. When, the man, when demand is low, the firm must still assume the fixed cost expenses, as well as the lower productivity associated with unused warehouse space. If, if a firm uses only private warehouses, it also loses flexibility in its strategic location options. Changes in market size, location, and preferences can be rapid and unpredictable. If an organization cannot adapt to these changes in its warehouse structure, it may lose a valuable business opportunity. Customer service and sales could also fall if a private warehouse cannot adopt to change in the firm's product mix. Investment Because of the prohibitive costs involved, many organizations are simply unable to generate enough ca capital to build or buy their own warehouse. A private warehouse is a long-term often risky investment that may be difficult to sell because, it, because of its customized design. Startup, it, startup is often a costly and time-consuming process due to, to
to the hiring and training of employees, as well as the purchase of, of materials, handling equipments, rocks and shelves, and other items. And depending on the nature of the organization, return on investment may be greater if funds are cancelled into other profit gener generating opportunities. Cross ducking. Cross ducking is defined as a process that moves products quickly through a facility in order to minimize storage time. Ten products are unloaded from transportation carriers and enter the facility for a very short time, usually less than 24 hours sortation and consolidation of products often occur during the time that items are being temporarily stored in the facility. The products are then reloaded on the transportation equipment for outbound distribution to customers. Because storage costs are a key element in overall warehousing costs, cross-docking reduces the need for warehouse space and limits storage costs. Additionally, Cross docking facilities are typically less costly to build and maintain than traditional warehouses. Technically, the product never enters the warehouse. So here in cross docking, cross docking bypasses the storage activity by transferring items directly from the inbound receiving dock to the outbound or shipping dock. So, we have here the in, inbound and outbound. So, dito sa inbound, dito yung papasok or pa, dito paparating yung mga cargos or products na dadaan sa cross-docking terminal under receiving to sorting to shipping bago siya ma-outbound or mailalabas papunta sa mga customers. This activity has become very com commonplace in warehousing because of its impact on cost and customer service. For example, more than 50% of companies utilize cross docking to some extent. Eliminating the transfer or putting away of products reduces cost and the time goods remain at the warehouse, thus improving customers, thus improving customer service levels. Additional, additional benefits can include reduced transportation costs, less warehouse space use, and more shipments to customers being consolidated. So here in cross docking, it, um, it is a good strategy when one or more of the following conditions exist. Number one is when products are pre-picked to a customer order for a customer located nearby. Second, smaller LTL or what you call the LTL less than truckload shipments. Third, products arriving from multiple plants being combined into single orders. Fourth, products being consolidated into larger TL quantities for delivery to large cons consumers. We have also the types of cross docking facilities. These three types of cross docking facilities existed based on their level of complicity, complicity and the number of touches the products received during the cross-dock process. First, we have the pure, pure cross-docking, receiving and shipping product immediately with a single touch as product is received and loaded outbound without being placed on the warehouse dock. Second, two touch. Approach products are received and staged on the dock, then loaded outbound without being put into storage. Third, or the last one, is the multiple touch. Product is received and staged on the dock, then reconfigured for shipment and loaded outbound directly from the warehouse dock.